Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a community manager at Coffee Stain Studios, and today is my final video uh, for 2020. So I thought I'd do something special and do a really big Q&A video. Uh, there's a lot of questions. It's the biggest one we've done. So let's just get on with it now and we'll jump into the questions. How likely will it be that our saves will break in updates after update 4? Yeah, so a couple weeks ago I mentioned in a video that tier 8 is coming and it will also kind of break your saves in update 4. So your saves will load, but your factory will probably not be working anymore. You may have to repair it, I suppose, uh, so you could say. That was not necessarily intended, uh, but given the direction of the game, given the feedback we got, um, you know, we had to change the way that we looked at tier 8, and so we had to make some more drastic changes. The intention now is that, you know, we want to avoid that, of course, and there is no, there's actually no plan right now to do any other major rebalancing after update 4 into 1.0, so the current plan is no, there won't be breaks, but the reality is there, there's a really big chance that, you know, we, we will start observing some, you know, some feedback from the game and we will make decisions that, you know, well, you know what, we may need XYZ for the game to be good and maybe that will result in, in the uh, saves breaking. It is likely that this will happen again, but we don't want it to and we don't plan on it, but you never know. Are tiers 8 to 10 anywhere near accurate on the Satisfactory Wiki? Okay, so some of you may not know this, but we actually have like an official wiki which is maintained by the community. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the descriptions down below. On it, there is uh, listings for tier 8, tier 9, and tier 10, and some information of things that are in them or, you know, rumored to be in them. So this question is asking how accurate are those listings in um, the Wikipedia, the uh, satisfactory wiki? The answer is not accurate, like at all. There's actually only like one thing in tier 8 that is correct and everything else is, e is either wrong or won't exist. Now, a lot of the information came from the fact that some tier 8 related stuff was initially cooked into the build, then data mined out. But the thing is, a lot of the stuff that was in the game a long time ago was in the game as a prototyping thing. And many things have been in the game and been removed. So that's kind of just what happened. What was in the game years ago uh, that has then been removed was not really an indication of what's actually gonna come. So that's sort of where that information was based off, but uh, we can confirm that most of it is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Will Fixmas and seasonal events in general be a regular thing? Maybe, we don't really know. It's super fun, obviously, like, and everyone seems to be loving Fixmas, and that's great, and it was really fun for the team to uh, take some time away to just, like, focus on something really fun for a little while. Like, if we have time, we'll do it, but it also really just kind of depends where we are in development at that specific moment in time as well. So last year, we didn't do anything Christmas related. Uh, and that wasn't because we didn't want to. It was just like, uh, with all the work that was happening with update three, we did not have time to stop to to get a, a seasonal event out. So it would be cool to do other things like Easter and or maybe other, you know, and, and, and other things as well. We'll kind of have to just sort of play it by ear, you know? It'll happen if it happens, I guess, is, is, is the short answer. Will we get science anytime soon? Soon? No. Soon TM? Yes. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Are there going to be more types of foundation shapes? Will there be added functionality such as rotating on other axes? We plan on giving you more options with foundations and walls, and this is going to be a super vague answer here, but whether we do that by making more things or whether we do that by changing the way things work is something that uh, we don't really know yet, but um, foundations and walls and building functionality is, is not done completely as it is. There, there's probably going to be some changes to that um, in the future. Will trains be getting any updates, signals, collision? Trains will definitely be getting updates. It's something that we've been meaning to do for quite a long time and uh, it's just been falling through. So we're, we're gonna get around to trains. Trains are gonna get more love for sure. And the plan right now is to have both signals and collision on the trains. We don't wanna introduce one at a time, we want both. So it's gonna be eventually, the plan is that eventually trains will have both collision and signals. I don't know when that's coming though, but uh, one day. How does the current trajectory to the game compare to everyone's original concept of the final version? What are some things that are better slash worse than imagined? Well, I mean, Pipes fucked up the game. That was the biggest mistake, you know? So things are worse than we ever imagined now. There's no going back. The game's over. A dead game. It's all over. Okay, so the vision of the game has evolved over time. Um, we think for the better. We have control over the direction of the game every step of the way, right? And every decision we make is based on, you know, the here and now of what does the game look like now? What information can we gain 
by, uh, you know, from feedback from players, and then how can we make it better, right? So, you know, the game initially started with base defense being a core part of the game, and then we actually started making that, and then we found that we didn't like it at all, and we cut it completely. And now it's not going to be in there, right? You know, and then uh, the qu there's the question of like, well, is that better or worse than we imagined? Well, we think it's better than we imagined because the game is better now because we don't have that, we believe. Okay, so like that's kind of why we, we strive for it to always be better and we think that it's been going in a pretty good dire direction. Um, yeah, pretty normal stuff for game development, I think. You just sort of have to pivot and shift and react um, to uh, design problems that may show up as you uh, develop the game. Will we keep our Fixmas stuff after the event ends? Your Fixmas stuff will remain. Uh, you're going to keep all the items and whatnot, but recipes or build Fixmas buildings. So if you tear anything down, you won't get it back. Um, anymore, I guess, or unless we bring it back again next year or something like that. Uh, but some things will disappear, like, you know, advent calendars is going to go, uh, the mam tree is going to go, uh, hats, the lizard doggers design is going to go, wreaths on the power poles, things like that will sort of disappear as well. You can kind of preview what it's going to be like right now by turning off the Fixmas event in game. There's an option in gameplay, I think, to turn it off. And that's basically what it's going to be like after the event ends. Uh, so you could sort of demo that now. Uh, yeah, but you know, so maybe some people want to make uh, a bunch of cool Christmas stuff and then leave it in their game so they can look at it six months from now. Uh, and you know, you, you should still be able to do that, but if you tear it down, you won't be able to build it back up again. How proud, on a scale of 0 to 100, are you of the code you wrote and systems you helped make in Satisfactory? The question then goes on to sort of say, it's something I struggle with sometimes wanting to be a perfectionist, but knowing that perfection is the enemy of good enough. Sometimes I find some of my stuff well below my own standard and I never get around to improving it because everything else is more important. So this is kind of just like, uh, like what you're mentioning here is kind of just like a problem that is pretty common in game development, I suppose. Uh, and you kind of need to find that balance b between uh, perfection and good enough because uh, sometimes uh, perfection is just not really uh, like achievable, but also, uh, we, we thought, you know, you know, you, you sort of directed this at, at me, but I, I thought, you know what, we'll, we'll open this up to uh, everyone in, in, the, in, in the office, and uh, this is the response that we got. Yeah, so you can go back and pause that if you want to read it all, but uh, I think this is kind of telling. I think this tells this person, surprise only, who asked this question. I think this maybe gives you this heads up that a lot of the people working on this game right now feel they don't know what the hell they're doing either. <laughs> Get, forget the perfection. Just move forward. What does a day in the life of community manager Jace look like? I assume wake up afternoon, lunch from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and playing video games by 4.30. Yeah, whatever, dude. Whatever. Whatever, dude. Think, think you're funny. Wow. Yes. How are you planning to balance optimization versus new tiers slash features in the future? Optimize as you go or as early access comes to a close and the game approaches 1.0, will there be a big push for optimization leading up to that? The short answer is we just optimize as we go. Uh, there could also maybe be pushes of optimization at s certain points along the way, but uh, short answer is optimize as we go. Now we've got a couple questions here from Rage Boner, and I, I two questions from Rage Boner because A, they're good, and two, his name is Rage Boner, or their name is Rage Boner. Is player fatigue a concern for you? Do you see people drop off en masse at certain points in the game? If so, what do you do to combat this? So fatigue is, uh, is a huge thing that we look at, of course, for sure, and we have noticed um, points at which people drop off and, you know, maybe they're too bored or maybe they're too frustrated or something like that. And so we make adjustments to those places. So one example of that is actually the bauxite refinement. That's something that we had noticed um, that there was a lot of player fatigue around that or some issues uh, around that. And so we're making adjustments to that in update four. Uh, more information on that in the tier eight video from a couple weeks ago. Can we paint vehicles? Yes, eventually. The real question is, can we paint lizard dogger? That's the real question. No one's asking it. Where did the idea of Satisfactory come from? It's easy to think it's just a 3D version of Factorio, but I would guess the idea originated earlier. No, it's pretty much uh, 3D Factorio. Uh, that's pretty much what we called it internally as well. That's uh, basically what we were kind of going for. We took some inspiration from other places as well. And uh, obviously after tackling design challenges that came up uh, with the nature of, of our game, you know, the game took its own sort of shape and form as well. But um, no, I mean, I heavily influenced by Factorio, of course, uh, but we're not a clone, not a clone, you guys. One of the quality of life items many of us would love to have is the ability to replace walls, doors, windows, etc. without having to delete them. Not a question, but... Yes. It's something that we have thought of, and it's also, uh, there's some design things that we need to be solved before we do it, but... 
You know, I think that's realistic that we could have that at some point. Definitely a really cool idea. Is there a plan for nuclear waste besides being used as lizard doggo treats? So for that, uh, Tim has all the answers. Please DM at Tim Badilak on Twitter. Uh, he gave some of the answers on, on stream a few weeks ago. I think there's an update coming where you can uh, you can do stuff with the toxic waste. <gasps> Lee, he just comes out and says Leaf. this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he has all the information on that. Feel free to go and DM him and uh, ask him. Are there any other plans for vehicles? Amphibious vehicles, aero vehicles? Uh, so we have a lot of uh, ideas for new vehicles in our backlog. So we have a massive backlog of things that we, you know, we might want to do. And uh, there are a lot of vehicle ideas in there. Um, but we don't know if or when we're actually going to do anything about it. Something that uh, Director Mark Chan is thinking about is um, actually upgrading the existing vehicles or just, uh, upgrades to vehicles. One example is like, what if you put like mowing contraption or like mowing equipment on the tractor so that, you know, it becomes more viable later uh, to automate it so it collects biomass or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's kind of cool. Uh, biomass and lizard dog and meat, you could just mow it all up together put it into its inventory. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So maybe like uh, maybe like upgrades to vehicles could be really cool. So any plans on giant boss enemies and a giant mech suit to fight them in? Mark thinks the uh, mech suit will never happen. Uh, he's, he's wrong, of course. Also, big crab. Will combat be expanded upon more enemies? Combat will be expanded upon. The, the focus isn't necessarily on combat. We see uh, combat as part of exploration and exploration, which is... Um, you know, it's the combat, it's creatures, uh, equipment even is, you know, under the umbrella of exploration. Uh, exploration needs a little bit more work. And so a, a lot of those pillars underneath exploration will get some love as well. So there's probably going to be some changes to the way combat works. Um, and yeah, more equipment and more creatures and a big crab. Are there plans for mass building foundations and walls? Okay, so we've talked about this a, a bunch of times, but it's a question that still comes up. So many of you who, uh, you know, watch all of our videos are like, oh, this question again. But um, the answer has generally been, it's an ongoing discussion. And so I figured I would ask Mark, you know, what's the status on that? And he told me, he said, it's still an ongoing discussion. Are you a woman trapped in a man's body? <laughs> Is it really that obvious? <laughs> Is there a reason we cannot package sulfuric acid? Well, this question was asked before last week's video came out about the parts. If you had seen that video from last week, uh, you will have noticed that packaged sulfuric acid and packaged alumina solution will be coming in uh, update four. And if you haven't seen that parts video, I recommend you check it out. Card up here. But Jace, will there be lights? Yeah, we plan on it one day. There's gonna be lights, all right? They're hard to make. We're gonna, we're gonna make the lights. They'll be in the game one day. We're looking into it. If you were a satisfactory building, what building would you be? <laughs> I'd be a biomass burner. I'd be a biomass burner. <laughs> really fucking simple. <laughs> and basic. Uh, I thought that we would ask Snoot this as well and see what he said. Um, and he said that his favorite is a steel furnace. Okay. Oh, and by the way, for those wondering, Simon would definitely be the superposition oscillator. You know, it's not even a building. It's just an enigma. All right. Is Simon okay? I don't know. Let's ask him. Hi, Simon. How are you? Hey, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Fine. Good. All right. Thanks, man. By the way, what? what did you think about cyberpunk so far? It's all right. Why don't my computer screens in my hub show me power consumption or total production? Because we didn't program them to. <laughs> yeah, it's a highly requested feature, this kind of thing. Uh, some ability to monitor your um, overall power consumption or production and things like that would be cool to have it in the game solved in some way. It probably wouldn't be on tiny screens. You know, or we could have those screens to display some stuff, but if, you know, you probably want more detail and maybe a custom menu in order to do all that. So it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. And, and if we could find a way to do it, I think it's something that might come. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a matter of, you know, actually doing it. Are farms going to be a thing? So farms and farming um, is something that we're pretty sure we're actually going to do at some point. Um, Unless we change our mind, okay? But as, as, it, as it stands right now, farming is something that we've had in our minds for a little while and um, has been appealing and, and, and has continued to be quite appealing for, for this game. However, if we do do it, we don't think we're going to do it before 1.0. We don't think we need it for 1.0. So um, that's the current situation on farms slash farming. Hmm. 
Will there ever be third person? Uh, it's something that we want. I mean, why not? Some people like it. However, third person actually comes with a lot of unique challenges uh, that we would need to solve. You know, if we if, if we have third person in the game, if we support it, then we have to make sure that it works well as well. And building in 3D is obviously quite a hard design problem for us to, to have solved in the first place. And we've done a decent job now, but uh, changing to third person introduces new issues. And so we would need to solve that as well. It, it's a cool thing to have, but uh, it's not driving the game forward, I guess. And so that's some, so it's like it's constantly falling short of the priority list, I suppose. We'll see. We'll see if it happens or not. Character customization. Uh, yeah, we think that we're going to have that. Uh, to what capacity, we don't really know yet. Like, are you just going to change your colors or will there be different skins or like hats you can wear? Um, who knows? We think that we'll probably end up adding character customization at some point. It makes sense. And it makes a lot of sense for multiplayer as well. Names in photo mode, when? Uh, so this is a question from BrainDG. Uh, someone, uh, one of our content creators does a lot of cool uh, community games and community events. Definitely check them out uh, if you haven't, BrainDG. Uh, and they've been wanting names in photo mode for a long time for, you know, pictures they take and you want to see who's in the pictures, right? I'm sure a lot of people want this as well. Now, this is something that we'll probably have at some point. The problem is that uh, it's kind of low prior and so it never really makes it onto the priority list either. Um, another one of those things, but we kind of do want to enhance photo mode in general. And so it may be that we're just going to wait until we allocate a bunch of time to make uh, a better photo mode. Uh, then we'll then have the names uh, show up in photo mode as an option there as well. So definitely something good. I'm sorry, brain, it's taken so long. <laughs> but there's a lot of things people ask for that take a long time. So uh, it'll come. Any thoughts on adding drones to the game that would get you supplies from the factory while you're building far away and don't have a vehicle pass set up yet? So we hear you on the second part of that question um, in that it's problematic when you're building far away and you want to get supplies to you. So, you know, that is a problem that could be solved in some way. But whether it's drones, whether it's something else, don't know. But uh, totally hear the the concern or the problem that you're experiencing there, and we'll find some some way to work it out. Do you miss Australia or is Sweden better? Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm Australian, so I grew up there, uh, but I live in Sweden because that's where Coffee Stain is, and uh, I've been living here for a while. Um, but I don't really miss Australia. I, I don't like have a thing against Australia or anything like that. I, I like Australia. It's a great place, um, but I don't I don't really miss it. I'm I'm happy here in Sweden. Will there be new biomes? Uh, well, we can ask Hannah. So Hannah, what do you think? Are we going to have any new biomes? No! Okay. She seemed pretty, pretty sure on that one. Do you enjoy working from home or are you looking forward to getting back into the office? Uh, personally, I love it. I love working from home. Uh, I'm the kind of person who loves a lot of, a lot of alone time. So, so this... Uh, has actually been amazing for me uh, working from home. Uh, but you know, there's uh, not everyone is like that. A lot of people needed to to get out and you know work in an office. I'm sure a lot of folks out there um, uh, can can identify with with that as well. So there are some people who go back and work at the office, and and um, due to the regulations that we have here, that's okay so long as it's not too many people and there's not that many people, and we have a really big office. So uh, so some people get to uh, go back and work at the office, but I I love it working from home. Will Sam or ever be useful? Yes. How do you have your coffee and slash or tea? So I prefer tea to coffee and uh, I like it black just with a pinch of cocaine. Just a little, little pick me up, you know, extra, get that extra kick. Get me, get me started for the work day. <laughs> do you ever look at the mods and think there are features you'd like to include in the full game? Uh, not really. Most of the things that uh, have been like modded, uh, we've already had like either planned for or have been in our backlog or something like that. There are a couple things that have come up that are, you know, that we hadn't thought of that we now uh, think of. <laughs> Whether we'll do it or not, I don't know. Uh, I, think, I think something that's really interesting is seeing the implementation of specific features. You know, so sometimes we may have a feature in mind, but we don't visualize uh, how it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to function. And we get to see examples of that via mods. And so that's pretty cool as well. Also, there's something actually kind of strange that happens. All right, so like word on the street is, is that whenever we start talking about a new feature that we want internally, you know, around the lunch table, the modders then release that feature like two days later. So uh, I'm putting my tinfoil beanie on and uh, and uh, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know, kind of sus, vote lime green, all right. Dedicated server status report. Okay, so dedicated servers are still being worked on. We're chipping away at multiplayer bugs and we need to solve those multiplayer bugs first before we can do uh, dedicated servers. So it's not uh, so much an issue of making the functionality of dedicated servers. The issue is, is fixing bugs 
that will break the gameplay experience completely, whether you're on a dedicated server or not. And most of the issues people are having are issues that dedicated servers will not fix. We need to fix those bugs as they are. Uh, something to remember is that if you're on a dedicated server, what means is the, the server is the host and you're the client and everyone playing is the client. And most people reporting issues are people who are playing as clients. And what, what this means is on a dedicated server, everyone will have that client experience and no one will have the host experience. That's something to remember here. So the, the focus on getting dedicated servers working is making sure that our multiplayer works better. And we are constantly working on that. So that's the, the status report is we're still working on it. Do you plan to add copy and paste functionality or slash blueprints or any other way to quickly duplicate existing factories? Okay, so we've answered this question a bajillion times, but again, this is an ongoing discussion. Uh, people still ask, so I'm gonna answer it again. The answer was always a no, and I thought, well, because it's ongoing, I'll check in with Mark, and I checked in with Mark. Mark's thoughts have actually shifted a little bit. He's kind of starting to think that it's more of a, it is kind of more of a good idea. Now, this is just Mark's opinions. Mark, even though he's the director, doesn't mean he makes every single decision, right? We're, we're a team of people and we, everyone has different opinions. And, and uh, so, it's, you know, everyone, everyone's opinions weigh in here, right? But, but Mark's opinions, um, if we were to do it, we don't think that Factorio's blueprint system is what we would want, or we don't think just a simple copy paste is what we would want, but some kind of functionality to facilitate the repetition that people experience could be cool. So that's, that's, the, that's the update for you. That's uh, Mark's current opinion on it, which is different than before. So there's movement there. But um, I can't really tell you anything more than that because that's literally it. Yeah. Has the decision to press on to 1.0 recently been prompted, at least in part by financials? My impression was you folks did like experimenting with updates before 1.0 and there were updates planned, but ultimately shelved. Okay, so that's a pretty interesting impression. I'm not sure what gave you that impression, but I get the feeling that maybe you're not alone. Like maybe we've given that impression somehow. So I figure I'll just talk about it anyway and I'll clear the air. There actually kind of was a little bit of a shift uh, to focus on 1.0. But it wasn't prompted by sales or anything like that. Like, we're, we're doing great, you guys. Um, thank you. <laughs> the prompt was mostly like, well, we got to do update four now. Uh, and after update four, it's going to be update five. And in order to really plan what we should do in those, we need some idea of what the end goal is going to be. So we really just started focusing more on 1.0 uh, as a means of having some kind of direction so that we weren't shooting in the dark, basically. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And we have a pretty good idea of what that is now. We're still always refining it, but uh, yeah, we really want to go for it because you know we're an early access game, and we feel that it's it's our responsibility to get out of early access. Uh, we need to we need to finish the game and and give you the experience that we wanted, right? And that doesn't mean development stops after 1.0. You know, we could still add stuff. Maybe I'm not saying we will, but we've always alluded to the fact that we probably would add more. Yeah, we, we, we still want to, we kind of want to get out of early access. You know, that doesn't mean, you know, we're, we're not cutting things out to get there, to rush, to get thin. We're clearly not rushing, you guys. We're so slow with our updates. We're not rushing. We, we sit back and we take an honest look at, okay, what are we doing? What do we want? What do we consider a good finished 1.0 game? And then we're going to work towards that. But that shift did kind of happen uh, a few months ago. And, you know, the fact that you brought up this question, I, I guess it shows in some in somehow. And that's really interesting to me. So thanks for the question. That was good. Okay, so that's a lot of questions, a lot of answers. Uh, and if you found it interesting or informative or helpful or fun and entertaining even, uh, leave a comment down below and give it a like. And I just want to say before I go, a big thank you to the community. Thank you so much. Um, uh, not super good at doing this stuff, but <laughs> thank you. Um, this year has been crazy and it's... You know, a lot of things happen and you guys were there with us the whole time being supportive and positive and and um, passionate as well and active. And these are not things that as a game developer that I or we should take for granted. Uh, I think it's clear that if you look around at a lot of games out there, they don't, you know, they don't always have this kind of support. And, and we are fortunate to have that. We're fortunate to have you guys um, being as amazing as you are and as funny as you are. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much for putting up with me. And <laughs> thank you very much for playing our game. Thanks for sharing screenshots and memes and videos uh, on YouTube and streaming the game. And thanks for joining us uh, for these videos and on stream as well. Thank you so much for making those um, uh, worthwhile even, <laughs> I guess. So um, yeah, I, I'm not, yeah, like I said, I'm not really good at doing this stuff, but uh, I just want to say that I don't take you all for granted. Uh, uh, I appreciate you all, and I, I think we're very fortunate to have uh, a community like the community we have. Um, and it's it's an honor to be your community manager, you guys. So thank you all very much for an amazing 2020. Well, it's as good as uh, the world was on fire, but we were doing great. 
Great job, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I look forward to uh, continuing to be your community manager in 2021. Some of you will be happy to hear that. Some of you may be less so. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, whatever. Enough jokes. Thanks again, everyone. Stay safe over the holidays, and uh, I will see you next year. Okay, bye. Time for my vacation. Why did I say it like that? I was like, I'm going to say time for my vacation in a funny way, and then I can put it in. It's going to be funny. And then I'm just like, I sounded like a British GPS. Time for my vacation. Turn left. Turn left. Vacation. On the left. Hmm.